Welcome to the PeopleSoft Purchasing Prerequisite course. And if you're new to the University of South Carolina, welcome to one of the best places to work in the state. The purpose of this course is to provide you with an overview of the purchasing guidelines and payment methods used at the University of South Carolina. This course will also help you determine which PeopleSoft purchasing training classes you need to attend in order to purchase goods or services for your department on behalf of the university. Completion of this course is required prior to attending PeopleSoft Purchasing Classroom Training. As I mentioned, in this course we will provide you with a brief overview of the USC Purchasing Guidelines. All the policies can be found on the main USC website under Policies and Procedures. We will discuss the various methods used to pay for goods or services for your department. We will introduce you to the PeopleSoft website, which contains valuable information regarding PeopleSoft here at USC. And lastly, we will show you where to go to get the form that must be completed in order for you to gain access to PeopleSoft. There are two primary premises that business personnel operate under at the university. There's South Carolina state law, it's called the South Carolina Consolidated Procurement Code and Regulations, and there's also the university policies and procedures. The purchasing department uses the South Carolina Consolidated Procurement Code and Regulations to ensure that proper procedures are being followed to acquire the university's needs. And as a business person in your department, you will need to become familiar with the university policies and procedures so that you can ensure that your department adheres to them. It is important to also adhere to the code of conduct regarding the purchasing guidelines. The code of conduct is actually derived from the South Carolina ethics guidelines. Therefore, it is not permissible for the officers, employees, or the agents of the university to solicit or accept gratuities, favors, or anything of monetary value from contractors or parties to subagreements. Also, it is not permissible to split orders to avoid competitive method methodologies that have been established. We will review the competitive methodologies in the next slide. This slide is an overview of general purchasing methods used to procure the needs of the university. Remember, it is important not to split your requirements to avoid taking the appropriate actions as required by law. These competitive guidelines are discussed in detail in the purchasing workshop training session. This training session is offered twice a year through organizational and professional development and will prove to be another helpful resource for you. Some of the critical business policies and procedures that you should review are listed on this slide. They are in the process of being updated to reflect changes as a result of the implementation of PeopleSoft and also to reflect some statutory changes in procurement law. FINA 7.01 is new and may not yet be published, but be on the lookout for it. It will outline the general process for purchasing, receiving, and paying for university goods and services. The primary payment methods used at the university include the procurement card, which is commonly referred to as the P-card. The P-Card has a single transaction limit of $4,999.99 and a monthly limit of $10,000. It is used for purchasing goods and services under $5,000 that include small utilities like DirecTV, Verizon, and several other commodities. Note that food and asset purchases cannot be made using the P-Card. Assets are defined as furniture, fixtures, and equipment 
that has a value of 5000 or greater and a useful life of over two years. The payment request is used for many items that are not allowed with the P-Card. Use the payment request matrix for a listing of all eligible transactions, the approved dollar limits, and the documentation that must be submitted along with the payment request for processing. Submitting a payment request without the proper documentation will delay processing of the payment. Again, note that assets cannot be paid using a payment request. For purchases of goods and services that exceed 10000 or assets and radioactive materials regardless of the amount, the purchase requisition is the required method. The purchase requisition is used to generate a purchase order. Once the goods or services have been received or completed, an invoice is used to generate a payment against the purchase order. Note that there are times when a supplier may require a purchase order regardless of the amount. In those cases, contact the purchasing department and we'll process the transaction accordingly. The type of purchases you plan to make will determine which training you will need to attend. If you plan to make purchases using the P-Card, then contact Kim Rose in the Purchasing Department. She can provide guidance on what is needed to get started and the training schedule. If you plan to enter payment requests, you should complete the payment request training located on the resources page, which we will show you in a later slide. And lastly, if you will be entering purchase requisitions, you can use the PeopleSoft training schedule to sign up for requisition and receiving training. If you have questions, you can email the purchasing or accounts payable departments at their email addresses provided here. The PeopleSoft website contains a wealth of information for the PeopleSoft user community. The navigation to the PeopleSoft website is sc.edu, then About, then Offices and Divisions, then the Division of Information Technology, then PeopleSoft. The landing page is the news article page, and as the name states, it contains the latest news articles related to PeopleSoft. The sections of the website are listed in the left navigation. The most commonly accessed sections are news, training, and the training section houses the online training schedule and the available e-learning topics. There's also a section resources. This section houses recorded webinars, quick reference documents, class PowerPoint presentations, and more. There's a section for newsletters. This has the current and archived versions of the PeopleSoft newsletter. There's also a contact us page. It contains email addresses to which you can forward your questions. And last, but not least, a new user information page. As the name implies, this contains information to help new users get started using PeopleSoft by identifying recommended training and reference material. The PeopleSoft training schedule shows the title of the class, the date and time of the class, the duration, and where the class is located. Click the link on the class title to access the page used to register for a class or webinar. The resources page has the most recently posted and most popular items at the top. The next section titled PeopleSoft Videos contains webinar recordings. All other sections are grouped by functional area. The most current version of the newsletter is accessed by clicking the red new icon on the newsletter page. Archived issues are listed in the table below. 
The Contact Us page provides a listing of email addresses to help determine where to send your questions or issues for fast response. The email addresses listed here are monitored by a pool of individuals. The New User Information page provides guidance to anyone new to PeopleSoft. It lists training and other resources available to get them started. Lastly, please ensure you have completed and submitted the PeopleSoft access form prior to attending training. This form is located on the resources page. Use the instructions above to print the form and get the appropriate signatures. Once the form is completed, fax the form to the number indicated. Click the button and complete the form to indicate that you have viewed this video.